This is the new Bruce Springsteen box set, the album collection volume two. This follows up the original volume one, which came out in 2014, I believe. Now, Sony have done a great job with the packaging here because um, it has a great textured finish. You can see this is designed in the style of a, a flight case and um, just got lots of good attention to detail. These, these are actual stickers. Uh, they did actually do this with the first box set. And a couple of stickers on the top. That's the rear of the box there. So it, it definitely feels a cut above the average um, rigid card. It's called rigid card, most of the uh, materials that box sets are made out of. So this, this feels a cut above that kind of thing. Sort of mock kind of leather at the side. It looks really good. I think this is called like a shoulder lid something like that the only downside about these kind of lids is quite often you go to pick up the box set and you just take the lid off instead of picking it up but anyway i like it it's, it's actually um surprisingly uh, slight in a way it's thinner than i expected but we'll have a look at the records inside this set now this is a 10 lp box set and it consists of four studio albums tunnel of love Human Touch, Lucky Town, and The Ghost of Tom Joad. There's a few other bits in here as well, including the MTV Plugged performance. But uh, let's just take these out one by one. Now I should point out, you do get this numbered certificate of authenticity with each box. So these are uh, numbered collections. And the first album, mine's actually got a little bit of a mark there, which is slightly disappointing, but... um. They've made Tunnel of Love a double, which I don't believe has been done before. It's not 45 RPM, but it is two records. It's not gatefold either. Uh, they've just got two records in, inside yeah, one sort of um, wallet. This is all fairly much as you'd expect. They've kept to the same style and presentation as, as the original. Printed inner sleeves. I've played this already, it sounds incredibly good and it's a very, the, certainly the, the one I've got is a very quiet pressing. Slightly disconcerting having to turn it over so much, you know, without the benefit of a 45 RPM pressing, but anyway. So this album came out in 1987, it was the follow up to Born in the USA. Now the next two records famously came out on the same day in 1992, Human Touch and Lucky Town. Now, I don't know about you, but this is where the uh, forgetting about the quality of the recordings, this is where the quality of the graphic design and presentation took a tumble. I mean, both these front covers are horrendous. The typography is horrible. That photo of Bruce on the front of Lucky Town is awful. Uh, it's just the predominant use of red is horrible. I thought that at the time and I still think it now. When you think how good the classic, you know, Darkness on the Edge of Town and um, Born to Run, when you think of the design of those records and you look at this, this is a classic example really of not needing to put out two albums. I think one rec one really good album could have come from these two records. Human Touch in particular is quite a dodgy record. Uh, this is a double again in this um, box set. So two printed inners again. Human Touch got to number one and Lucky Town got to number two in the UK. But neither record got to number one in America, which is a bit of a surprise. I guess the theory is that because there was two albums, uh, it split the sales. So the early 90s was the era of the MTV Unplugged. Now Bruce eschewed the unplugged aspect of it and just decided to go for the full electric this is another double album, two vinyl records. Unfortunately, it's quite heavy with Lucky Town and Human Touch, so I'm not sure it's a classic, but again, two printed inner sleeves. I'm not sure about this design, but. Red Columbia labels. So there was a bit of faffing around in the early 90s, after Lucky Town and Human Touch, there was the MTV album 
uh, followed by the greatest hits that came out in 95. Uh, eventually, the next album would be The Ghost of Tom Joad. This is a single album, side one, side two. Uh, another printed in a sleeve. And then the last two records in here are actually, they're kind of 12 inch EPs. So this is the Blood Brothers EP. This originally came out in 1996. Uh, it's a five track recording. This comes with a polyline sleeve. There's no uh, printed inner for this one. And then finally, there's this Chimes of Freedom uh, 12 inch. This dates back to um, 87, so uh, it has a live version of Tougher Than The Rest, as well as um, Born To Run, Chimes Of Freedom, and Be True. This is the same thing, it's got polyline dinner. This has the sort of classic Columbia red label. Now the good news is this box set does come with a digital download, and they've actually put the download code on the back of this spec sheet. So this is the sheet that goes on the back when it's sealed so it tells you what's in inside. And if you turn it around you can see here it's got the details about how to download um, their mp3s unfortunately but this is quite a nice way of doing it rather than having one of those tiny little cards floating around getting hidden amongst the vinyl so I quite like that. But what I wanted to show you the book is really good it's a soft back it's not a hard back quite unusually if you look at the um, if you look at the shape of the box there, it's quite unusual to see a book in a box that isn't the same dimensions, but I quite like the fact that they haven't made it square. Uh, and even though it's a soft back, don't let that put you off because um, anyone that knows about printing, this is like a matte laminated cover with some spot varnishing on it. Anyway, this is really good. I really like this book. They've done a great job. Uh, so lots of most of the photos have have spot varnishing on, and uh, it just reproduces adverts and newspaper coverage, etc. So it's just very interesting, and you know, quite a bit of work has gone into putting this together, it's sort of scrapbook style, I guess. But it's quite, you know, it's quite nice to hold the shape of it. It's not too big and arduous. The advantage for the record company is they don't have to spend money commissioning new essays. They just reproduce old bits of press. But it's, it's very appealing, the design of this. I really like it. And that's it. So this is Paul from Super Deluxe Edition taking a first look at Bruce Springsteen's The Album Collection Volume 2 on vinyl. Mm -hmm. 